In this video, we'll be looking at a couple of example problems involving a conical pendulum. A conical pendulum is a pendulum that doesn't swing back and forth in a single plane. It's something where you have an object attached to a string, and instead of swinging back and forth, it sweeps out a circle. Um, so the object is swinging around in a circular path. And if you look at the cord, the cord is sweeping out a cone. And so the video that was animating was showing an example of a conical pendulum. And the key thing with a conical pendulum is that you have two forces acting. Those two forces are shown in that video. You have the force of gravity acting downwards, and you have the tension in the string that's pulling at an angle. And we're going to see that as we look at this, that the y component of the tension is going to equal the force of gravity, but the x component of the tension, that's going to be the net force that's acting on the object. And so we're going to see this in a couple of examples on the next two pages. So this first problem, we have a conical pendulum. It's an airplane attached to a string that's swinging around in a circle. The mass of the airplane is 0 0.075 kilograms. It's moving in a circle with a radius of 0.44 meters. And it's moving with a speed of 1.21 meters per second. And we're going to calculate what angle this string makes with the vertical. And we're going to calculate the tension in the cord. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to calculate the force of gravity acting on this airplane. The force of gravity is m times g, so that's 0 0.075 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And if you multiply that together, you get 0.735 newtons. Again, besides the force of gravity, the other force that we have acting is the tension in the rope. And the tension in the rope has a y component and an x component. This y component must equal 0.735 newtons. Again, that happens because the airplane's not moving up at all, the airplane's not moving down at all. In the vertical direction, the airplane is in equilibrium, so the forces in the vertical direction must add up to equal zero. And so that means that if we're looking at the net force acting on the airplane, the net force acting on the airplane is the X component of the tension. So the vertical forces cancel. So the only force that's left is that horizontal component of the tension. We also know that net force is the mass times the acceleration. That's Newton's second law. But for something moving in a circle, the acceleration is found from the speed squared divided by the radius. So for this airplane, the mass is 0 0.075 kilograms. The speed is 1.21 meters per second. And the radius was 0.44 meters. And so if we multiply all those things together, we get 0.249 newtons. So combining those two equations together, we get that the x component of the tension must equal 0.249 newtons. And so now, if we look at the force diagram, we know that the y component was 0.735 newtons, and we know that the x component is 0.249 newtons. So we're trying to find the tension, and we're trying to find the angle that the string makes with the vertical. 
skin. That was this angle in the diagram, but because we have two vertical lines, these two angles are congruent to each other. You know, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we have those two angles being congruent. So looking at this, we get that the tangent of that unknown angle theta is the opposite side, 0.249, over the adjacent side, 0.735. Or we get that the angle is the inverse tangent of 0.249 over 0.735, which if you solve it out, you get 18.715 degrees. So the string makes an angle of 18.715 degrees with the vertical. And for part B, what is the tension in the rope? We get that from the Pythagorean theorem. It's the square root of Tx squared plus Ty squared, which if you multiply it out, 0.735 squared plus 0.249 squared, if you take the square root of that, we get 0.776 newtons. So again, a conical pendulum problem tends to be fairly straightforward. You just have to go through and make sure that the forces balance each other out. Um, sometimes, instead of being told the radius directly, you might be given what the length of the string is. You might be given what the angle is. And so you would be able to get that radius of the circle using trigonometry. But sometimes it's just told directly to you. The other ride that I want to look at, it's the same type of ride. This is a swing ride at an amusement park. The difference is this point of contact, it's not all the way up at the axis of rotation. Um, it's connected to this circular platform that's spinning around, but it is exactly the same type of problem. And we can see that in this problem, we're given the distance from the center of the circle, um, which is what we would have needed. Otherwise, we would have needed this distance here, and then we would have needed to know that horizontal distance that the chain was sticking out. And we would have had to add those two things together to get our radius of our circle. So in this one, it's kind of the reverse of the other problem. Um, we're given the angle and we're going to try and find the speed of the person in the chair. And so the first thing we do is we calculate the force of gravity. So the force of gravity is 65 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is 637 newtons. And then we have the tension. This is 50 degrees. So this angle right here is 50 degrees. The tension has a Y component, which must be 637 newtons. And it has an X component. So from this, we can use trigonometry to figure out what that x component is. We know the adjacent side. We're looking for the opposite side. So the tangent of 50 degrees is going to equal the x component over 637 newtons. So this gives us that the x component of the tension is 759.15 newtons. Now if I look, part A is actually asking us for the tension in the rope. We could find that directly because the tension is the hypotenuse. So we could use the, the cosine 
of 50 degrees would equal 637 newtons. That's the adjacent side. Divided by the hypotenuse, which is the full tension. And so this would give us our answer to part A, that the tension is 991 newtons. The part that we're more interested in usually is figuring out what that speed of the person is. And so we have this x component of the tension, which was 759.15 newtons. And so just like in the last problem, the net force that's acting is that x component. And the net force is the mass times the acceleration, which is the mass times the speed squared divided by the radius, which is 65 kilograms times the unknown speed squared divided by the radius of 12 meters. And so combining those two equations together, we get 759.15 equals 65 times the speed squared divided by 12. And so we can solve that for the speed. We multiply both sides by 12, we divide both sides by 65, and we take, take the square root. And we get the speed of the person in the chair is 11.8385 meters per second. So again, sometimes you're given the speed and you're asked to find the angle. Sometimes you're given the angle that it swings out and you're asked to find the speed. Um, in both of these problems, we were given the mass of the rider, which we do need to get the tension. But if all we were interested in was the speed or the angle, um, it actually turns out that the mass wouldn't matter. And so let's look at this to see why that's true. Let's look at this in terms of variables. Because it's common to be asked whether the mass matters and to be able to show that the mass does or does not matter. So again, we have the person, so we're drawing the free body diagram for the person. The weight of the person is mg. And we have that tension. We get that the y component of the tension balances out the weight. And we have that x component of the tension and we have this angle theta. And again, we have that the net force equals the x component of the tension, which is going to equal the mass times the acceleration. So if I look at my x and y components, the tangent of that angle theta equals the x component, which right here we're seeing is m times v squared divided by r, divided by the y component, which is m times g. And so, again, that's dividing by mg over 1 which means that we're multiplying by 1 over mg. And so we can see that the mass divides out. And we have that the tangent of theta equals v squared over rg. So this is really the relationship that we've been using in the other problems. If we're given the angle theta, we can solve for v. We can take the tangent of that angle, multiply by rg, and take the square root. Or if we're looking for the angle itself, the angle is the inverse tangent, 
of v squared over rg. Again, you can see that the mass divided out, so the angle is the same no matter what the mass is. which is important on a ride like this because if you're going to have different people on the ride you don't need to you're not going to have to worry about if a person has more mass than the other person are they going to swing out farther and run into the people the people will all be at the same angle um, we can actually see there's this swing that's in the background here it's an empty swing um, it's a little bit tough to see because it's kind of a perspective drawing it's you know, that's on a circle, but that empty swing would be at the exact same angle of 50 degrees um, as the swing that has the person in it. Again, conical pendulum problems are very common examples of circular motion. Um, it's an example of something where you don't just have the force acting in towards the center of the circle. You have some components that you have to look at but you do still look at the net force towards the center of the circle equals the centripetal force, which is mv squared over r.